just a simple man Hey guys, Urban Gotham Prepper here. Uh, so this next video in my series uh, is kind of a two-fold video. Um, I'm rolling a couple of things in, into one. Um, let me take a step back for a second. If those of you out there have seen my uh, philosophies of prepping video, um, one of the last things I mentioned in those videos was that I am trying to save up money to buy the mother of all packs, uh, the Everly Stock Destroyer pack. Um, it is quite a bit out of my range financially. Uh, <clears throat> it's like the last thing I need to complete my inch bag, um, which is what my overall goal is, is to have an inch bag, all my equipment, everything piled into one bag. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, I finally planned a trip to get out of the city with a couple of guys from work, spend a weekend, uh, get some dirt time in, a little bit of camping, practice some skills. And I needed a decent pack to take with me to bring all my gear. So I started shopping around, I needed something uh, middle of the road, not too big, looking for kind of like a weekend or a three day bag. Uh, and Everly Stock is still my go-to, but unfortunately um, the price is the, although worth it is just out of my range right now. So uh, I went looking for comparable bags <clears throat> and what I came up with was uh, a lot of people's go-to favorite which is the 511 Tactical Rush 72. Um, at a, literally a mere fraction of the cost of the Everly stock bags. Uh, it's got <clears throat> a lot of great ratings. Uh, a lot of people use it. It's a very popular bag. It's well known. Uh, and it had the space I needed and it had more or less most of the features that I was looking for. So this video is not necessarily a review of the bag. You can find a million and one reviews of the Rush 72 on YouTube. Just put in a search, you'll get lost forever. Um, so my intent is not to review the bag. Everybody's done that. Um, it's kind of more my take on some of the features of the bag, some things I would like to see changed about it. Uh, and how it suits my needs, um, uh, and more so um, its usability, not the features. Everybody can look, at the, look up the features. Um, and along with the, this kind of sort of review of the bag, I'm also going to do a quick run through of my loadout, how I pack my bag. Um, this loadout is specifically um, prepped for a weekend away. This is not a bug out bag, it's not a survival bag. It's not an inch bag, this is my camping loadout. So a lot of my equipment is left out of it. I've rearranged a lot of packs. So, <clears throat> um, so that's what this video is going to be about. And uh, I just thought it'd be fun to kind of show off my new tool. Everybody loves doing that. So uh, let's uh, cut to the next scene and uh, I'll show you more about the back. All right guys, so here's the loadout on. Uh, as you can see, uh, Half the pack is the ribs pack. Uh, I did a, uh, a video and review on, on my loadout for the ribs pack and a little bit of a review on it. You can go back and check that out. Um, and there's my baby, the Rush 72. Uh, I got it in the sandstone color. Um, as you can tell, a little bit by lighting. Uh, depending on the lighting and the camera and how you're looking at it, this thing. It must be some kind of magic trick that 511 pulled off. Um, it's almost like Everly Stock's uh, flat dark earth color. It, it changes colors depending on the environment. Um, in pure sunlight, it, it's got almost a coyote, um, like a coyote brown, but like a very subdued uh, brownish khaki kind of color. Um, and sometimes depending D depending on the lighting, it, you know, in, in, in room lighting and incandescent lighting, it's almost like a green, like almost like a generic olive, like army olive drap. So it, it's kind of cool that way. I guess, you know, it, it's almost like its own camouflage. I don't know how they figured it out, uh, but it works. So, um, and this is the first bag that I've ever purchased that's not black. Everything else I own is always black, tactical black. So I just decided to uh, make a change. But, uh, so this is the loadout. Um, the ribs back on front helps balance the weight a little bit. Uh, my go-to items. Uh, I'll go through them um, quickly in more detail, but I uh, just wanted to show you. You know, if you're looking for size reference, um, 
can tell I'm not the smallest guy in the world. I'm uh, like 5'10 and a half and about 240, 250, depending on how much Taco Bell I had the other night. So um, it, uh, it's a decent sized pack. I think it comes in at about 47 liters, something like that. Uh, so it, it can do, uh, it, it can haul a lot. And I've got this thing packed out. It's, it's pretty heavy. It, uh, I haven't weighed it, but I'm guessing we're looking at probably 45 pounds. Um, which may be a lot. It's especially a lot for a camping trip. But keep in mind, this trip is more of a training session. Um, I'm bringing a lot of duplicate stuff, uh, a lot of extra things with me that I want to try out. Um, <clears throat> so I'm hiking them out just for the sake of wanting to try a whole bunch of different things. So um, I've got some extra stuff in here that I wouldn't necessarily need for a hiking trip. Uh, but this is how it looks on. Um, and. Uh, just to give you an idea, you know, I've obviously I've got a couple of attachments. I've got the water bottle attachment here, and uh, I've got a water bottle attachment on the side here. Um, but uh, yeah, so that's how it looks. And uh, let's cut to the meat and potatoes. Okay, guys, so uh, I'll do a real quick run through of what's in the ribs pack. Uh, I'm not going to like review equipment, uh, it's just a quick show of how I selected what I wasn't going to keep in the Rush 72. Uh, things that I wanted to kind of keep on me for while I was on the move, didn't want to have to stop to take the pack off, that kind of thing. Um, and, you know, if I drop the pack or I'll leave it at the, uh, you know, at the camp to do like a day hike or something like that. It's a kind of easy modular, but uh, just the stuff I wanted to carry with me. So just I'll do a quick run through. This is obviously not what's, it's not the same stuff that was packed in here uh, for my inch bag, get out of town, shit hits the fan kind of scenario. This is camping stuff. So, um, left side, uh, in the main pocket, is just a, a 50 foot hank of 550. Um, and I've got my, uh, <clears throat> my expedition uh, thing. And it just has all my miscellaneous extras in it. Um, just all sorts of stuff, little tools, gadgets, knickknacks, um, just the, the small stuff that I want to get to easily. Uh, <clears throat> the outside pocket is um, strictly just uh, it's my, uh, my Predator slingshot, uh, it's my baby, and I've got a couple of bags of, uh, it's like basically 45 and kind of 9 barrel, no, more or less just a shot. Um, so that's what's in the, uh, the outside of that. Real simple, nothing to it. And on the right side is uh, more of the smaller stuff. Uh, <clears throat> in the top, this is my uh, uh, Woodsman from Dan's Depot. Um, pretty decent knife. It's uh, basically a knockoff of a Mora. They had a free giveaway deal, pay for shipping hand. I got for like four bucks or something like that. Not bad, sharp blade. Uh, didn't never got a chance to do a review. Kind of hard to tell, but there's like no tip on the thing. I was a little disappointed, but four bucks can't complain. It's like a backup, so that's in there. Um, my Sea to Summit uh, mosquito head net thing. Uh, not a fan of bugs. <laughs> Won't break it open, but this is my fire kit. Um, this, for the most part, uh, came from. Uh, Pathfinder from the Canterbury site. Um, I've modded it, added some extra things, but there's uh, uh, flint and steel in here, there's magnifying glass, lighters, fat wood, um, entire fire kit. I can start a million fires with what's in here. Uh, my Princeton headlamp, just run of the mill headlamp, that's my primary light source. Um, a pair of Tasco cheap. You know, I think it's really like 15 bucks, a little camouflage, 12 by 25 binoculars. Um, and the all important is I have this hand, you don't want to go digging around for it if you need to, but your standard uh, crap trial. <clears throat> um, and I, I don't know if I'd actually need this in here, but it, it's wrapped, you can't really tell, but uh, it's a frog gig. Uh, I'm not going to be doing any hunting type stuff, so I, I probably really don't need it. I just wanted to carry it on me. Um, so really, that's it. That's all I'm keeping in, in here. Oh, actually, no, I forgot the recording cards on the outside.
right side here. Uh, my, uh, my front compass, handy dandy. Um, can't wait to go spend some time learning and teaching myself some navigation techniques when they get to use it. Uh, signal mirror and some other stuff. And uh, my pair, <clears throat> my homemade ranger beads. Yes, and I went full geek status and I used numbered uh, beads. Not, not that I can't count without numbers, but I just thought it was kind of cool to do with that. So, uh, <clears throat> whistle, fire steel, and a uh, little light. And I have no intention of cracking this open. I probably shouldn't be in here, but uh, survival resources, how they recommend them. The, uh, the little mini fishing kit in a can. Uh, and that's it, that's all I've got in here. So, um, not a lot of stuff, not very heavy, still room to put some other things in here, or modular, or you know, do some modular stuff, as see fit. So, that is <clears throat> what I am carrying around in my ribs pack. All right guys, uh, moment of all I'm waiting for. So this is my, uh, this is my baby now. Uh, really, really excited. Uh, 511 Tactical Rush 72 in Sandstone. Um, <clears throat> so, like I said, I'm not going to review this bag. You've seen a million reviews on it. Um, so, one of the things I think is cool about the camo is that the, all the Molly webbing handles and everything are just a little bit different color than the main pack, which actually kind of adds to the camo tactical kind of thing. Kind of neat. Um, and like I said before, because it's like a cross between like a Coyote and like an OD and it's somewhere in the middle, um, the uh, um, any kind of add-ons, like this I added on, this was the uh, the water bottle um, water bottle kit that came from Pathfinder School from Dave Canterbury's and it comes, I, I believe it's just a Condor brand, their Coyote, and it matches almost the same. It's a little bit different, but it's pretty spot on. So you could get um, any kind of Molly attachments in Coyote. You could go um, Ranger Green. You might even be able to pull off like a like an Army OD, and they'll all kind of match. They'll fit in. It's not like throwing um, like a Coyote on a black bag that stands out like a sore thumb. They all kind of match. So that's one thing I kind of like about it. Um, so anyway, so the mods are this Molly, this on. Um, uh, I'm not going to go through this bag. It's the water bottle kit with uh, a couple other things from uh, Pathfinder School. On the front, on um, this hip belt, this is one of my favorite purchases ever. Um, I don't know if you can see this. This is uh, um, Millspec Monkey's water bottle corset. Um, coolest little invention ever. Uh, Molly's on. Nah, I'm not a big fan of the, uh, the plastic Molly strips they have, but they do the job. Um, but uh, yeah, this thing you can fit any size water bottle in here. From like, a, you can put a soda bottle in this thing. You can put a liter. You could almost you can't really fit a two liter. But almost any kind of uh, any Nalgene, they all fit. Um, it's completely adjustable. So I really like that. That was one mod. Um, I've got uh, my Moron that I just kind of rigged up on the front here. And I've got my uh, UV5R on the front here, and I just got a little pull thing here that I can keep. Um, uh, I usually keep like a sweat rag on there. Um, so I use when I'm out cycling, and my hydration powder. Uh, as far as mods, that's all I really have on it. And on the front, um, a couple of patches, you know, that gloves. Um, that's really that's all that I've done for for mods. Um, you know, there's not you don't really need to do a lot of modifications. Uh, so I'll do like a quick, quick, half-ass run through of what's in it. Um, I'll be honest with you, you've seen that a lot of the, uh, there's a lot, a lot, a lot of pockets in here. I found, at least for this loadout, that I almost didn't use any of them because I didn't really have that much of a need for them because the way all my stuff's packed is, is bigger. So nothing in here, nothing in here, nothing in here. Um, all I've got is my sniper, um, my Condor uh, sniper Shimog thing. Uh, got a sweat rag, a couple extra pairs of socks, and a headband. That's like all I'm keeping in here. 
uh, and an extra carry strap. That's all that's in the front. I mean, it's, uh, you know, I don't really need that much. Now, here's one of my first gripes. One thing I don't like about the Rush 72 is when you undo this, this opened up pocket area here. I get that, tactically speaking, um, whether military, uh, mostly military, um, could find good use for this as a quick access point. I don't like things having, I don't like things hanging out in the open more than I need to. Um, just the fear of stuff falling out, I like it to be contained, so I'm not a big fan of this. <clears throat> the only thing I have in here is my knee pads. It does have a little mesh on the side so stuff doesn't fall out, but other than that, this whole thing is open. Um, the other thing I don't like about it is you put anything in here and it takes away all this real estate in this outer pouch, which is another reason why I didn't pack a lot in here. So unless you're putting like, unless you're just stuffing like a windbreaker or a towel, uh, it's, it, 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 I find it more uh, detrimental to the pack than helpful, personally. Um, just know that it, it takes away a lot of this real estate on this outer pocket um, if you're going to get it. So, uh, at the pouch, I literally did not put anything in here because <laughs> I didn't have anything that's small, only all the small stuff is in the ribs pack. Um, so, that's, I mean, that's it for the outside. There's really not much to it. Um, this outer pocket, uh, I have, this is my, uh, um, my cotton uh, bedroll liner. Uh, liner sheet like kind of thing um, and in here this is my uh, my grand trunk hammock I can't wait to try this out it'll be the first time I haven't even opened this thing up yet uh, when I'm planning on doing hammock sleeping I'm not bringing a tent with me so uh, we're going to try that out for one night uh, and that's all I have in this outer pocket actually they fit very well um, so that's that let's turn this bad boy around Still on camera? Yeah. Okay. And then on this side uh, is more of the fun stuff. My blades, uh, uh, my straight SCHF 15, uh, just to carry. Uh, it, it's a great Kydex, but I have, there's no way to mount this to anything. It's just, uh, so I just threw it in there. It's good for a belt, but when I've got the pack on covering up all the belt area, I don't want anything on my belt because it's going to dig in, so just kind of left that out. Uh, let's see. And my other bad boy, I cannot wait to play with. This is my SCHF 10. Brand spanking new, never touched. <laughs> just got it recently. Uh, and then I got my leather wave in the front there. So, you know, these are great. Like, once I, you know, once I drop this bag at main camp and I'm going out tracking it all, I've got the ribs pack on, I'll be able to throw these on the belt very easily. Uh, and my vice, I have my pipe and my good smoking tobacco in here to enjoy sitting around the campfire. Uh, I did decide to bring a couple of pegs just to make my life easier. Um, I do have, you'll see, inside I do have uh, a large tarp, um, and I think I might need these just for setting up. I'm gonna try this out. This is the Gorilla Put. Um, I wanna see how it works. I bought it and then realized the thing is actually really heavy uh, and it's a pain in the ass to set up. It's ingenious, don't get me wrong, but I want to try it first and actually cook something on it before I decide to sell it off to a friend because I don't know if I'm going to keep it. Uh, and then just a uh, spatula. So that's what's in the outside. Uh, like I said, this actually does pretty good for long stuff. Um, as you can see, I've got you know, put most of these long objects in here. This pouch is, is big enough for almost anything that you want to want to throw in there. Uh, okay, and let's get to the main pouch. Um, I do like uh, that, that it's a clamshell style. Uh, it makes things very easy. Again, I will go back to what I said before about this pocket. There's pouches all over this bag. Everybody knows that. <clears throat> if you pack out the main tub, you lose all the real estate for these pouches, for anything big or worthwhile. I will just say that out loud. So just know that. I only have a couple things in here. 
um, literally three or four bandanas. And down here, especially this pocket gets really, really hard to put anything in if you're trying to close this up. Um, so all I have in here is I've got a boonie hat and I've got my Youngstown gloves. And shameless self plug, I did a review on these also. I'll put the link up somewhere around here somewhere or over here or down there or over there, maybe over there. Uh, you guys can check out these gloves. I'm going to really put these to the test this weekend. I'm going to try them out and really uh, really test them out. Maybe I'll get to do some videos, like some follow-up videos. So check it out on that. Um, and then the main pouch. Um, this tub, like I said, it, uh, it does pretty well as far as uh, packing stuff in. Um, uh, I've got a, I just threw the whole roll in here. You know, so I feel like I'm lining it. It's a thousand foot roll of, I think it's 18 um, hard bank line. Uh, can't wait to get to use it. Now, as you can see, I have it in a bag and in foil. One thing that they never tell you on the videos, everybody says, use bank line, use bank line. It's better than paracord. For all your purposes, other than actual parachuting, it is effectively just as strong. It's easier to tie knots. The tarred ones hold better. This, excuse my French, this shit smells. It smells, it's tar. So it smells like petrol products. It's in a plastic bag, it's wrapped in foil, and I can smell it through the bag. So if you're planning on carrying this stuff with you, man, make a suggestion, do this, and keep it in here while it's packed. Otherwise, everything you own will smell like it fell into a gas tank. Um, it's like, you know, it's patch across between diesel, gas, kerosene, uh, but can't wait to try it. So that's in here. Uh, these two, I did pretty proud of myself for this. These two are all of my clothes. I have three shirts, three pair of underwear, five pair of socks, a pair of shorts in these two bags. Not too shabby, it packed it on pretty well. This, this is the coolest invention ever, my recommendation to you. This is uh, what a, a set of sheets, bed sheets, come packed in, you know, in the store. And it's perfect for a pillow. You don't have to pack a pillow with you. All my clothes are in here. So as I'm camping, I just stuff whatever clothes I'm not wearing on me, put them in here, and ha, huh, I've got a pillow. Now I don't need to waste space in here for an inflatable pillow. Multiple uses for single items. Um, so, clothing, clothing. This bag, this is a little much, but like I said, I had a lot of shit I wanted to test. This is all kitchen-y food type stuff. I'm not going to go through it. There's coffee filters in here, um, scrubbers, my forks, knives, um, straws, all that. Anything that's kitchen food related is in here. A lot of stuff I want to try out and test. It's very big. It takes up a lot of space, but that's what it is. I'm not going into it in detail. Uh, this is just, these are all my toiletries. Everything that I need, soap, shampoo, toothbrush, toothpaste, everything is in this little pack. Uh, I packed it down very, very fine. It's three days out of the woods. I'm probably not even going to shower, to be honest with you. Um, so, everything I could possibly need, toiletry-wise, is in here. Uh, these are the Eno um, slap straps for the tarp. Like I said, I haven't used the tarp, or for the uh, hammock, I'm sorry, for the hammock. I uh, haven't got a chance to use them yet, but everybody I talked to recommended these and said, make your life simple and use these. They work great. So that's in there. Uh, cookware. Uh, yeah, I haven't given it out. Bowl. Um, this one's a little bit of at the MSR Seagull. Didn't spring for the titanium, it's too much. Uh, I'm not that much of an ounce counter. Uh, MSR Seagull plate. Also my frying pan. If I'm going to fry anything, which I don't think we are. Uh, and here, this is from uh, Pathfinder School. This is the uh, uh, for the video. Um, the uh, Pathfinder School my push pot. And that reminds me, oh yeah, and the top and the inside with its own stove. So I'm going to practice with this. This is one cooking setup I'm going to use. Practice with the stove in this. Um, and the grill put is the other one, and I'll show you the last one in just a minute. That's buried in the bag, my third way of cooking. So I want to try them all out and see which way, which I like best. 
Uh, this is my tarp. Yes, it is big, it's heavy, this thing weighs in at almost five pounds. But it's also 10 by seven. I know, it's ginormous, but there's nothing it won't do. Um, I know there's a lot of talk about, you know, only get it as big as you need. If you're under six foot, just get a seven by seven or something. Um, but I just, I felt the need to, uh, to get a bigger one. I just, I wanted to spring for it. So I did. Um, we'll see how it works. I'm going to play with it. Hopefully I get to post some videos and, um, you know, do a, I'm going to do a, try and do a couple of different setups. I'm going to try and fly it. We'll see how that goes. It's pretty damn big. Uh, and uh, we'll see how that goes. Um, now, we are going out in the middle of July, so as far as body temperature, core temperature regulation, I don't have much to worry about. I don't need to bring a lot with me. It's going to be the middle of July in upstate New York. It'll, if worst case scenario, it'll drop down to 60 degrees at night. We won't need anything. One of my favorite purchases um, was the U.S. Um, military's uh, MS, that's the military sleep system. I got the newest edition version um, in the digital camo. I am bringing just the bivy with me. I'm not bringing the lightweight bag. I'm not bringing the heavyweight bag. This whole entire thing, as you can see, packs down very small. The thing's like seven feet long, um, box foot, the whole nine yards. It's water resistant to a degree. Um, so between this, the cotton liner blanket, I'm gonna be sweating my balls off as it is, hammock or not. So this is pretty much all I need, is this and my hammock and my tarp, and I'm good to go. Um, so that made it for packing down very easily, otherwise I would have struggled, I'd have to strap the pack to the outside because the rest of the system is very bulky as far as uh, sleeping bags go. Uh, the last toy, it's embarrassing because, um, well, I love it. This is my uh, OKCSP8. Okay um, haven't touched it yet, but this is going to be my main felling device. Um, I cannot wait to get out and play with this. This is like my number one. This is the first thing I'm going to do is just get out of the car, go find a tree, and start hacking on it. Uh, <clears throat> one problem I have with OKC, and I will say it till the day I die, I'm so disappointed in them. The sheath that comes with this is so crappy that you can't even close it, so I can't use it. The knife doesn't fit in the sheath that is designed for it. Um, so I'm keeping it in a cardboard sleeve. I know it's, that's horrible, but whatever it is, what it is, it slides in here. Um, this actually is just, just a little too long to fit in the outside pocket. Just by like three quarters of an inch. So it's going to sit on the inside. Uh, and lastly, I, like I said, I don't really use these pockets much for anything. Um, the last thing, um, yeah, man, I dished out. I got the firebox. Uh, I can't wait to use that. That's the third cooking device. I want to see how it really works. You know, most of the time you only see the videos that firebox puts out about oh, how easy it is to use and how easy it is to set up. Um, I'm going to put it to the common man test and see how well it does. And, um, some common man reviews of it. If I could get a chance to do some videos on you know, how easy it is to keep it stoked and uh, temperature controls for cooking and stuff like that. So um, this thing is heavy. Um, it's eight, seven pounds, eight pounds in this little package. Um, it adds a noticeable difference to this pack, I'll tell you. Um, so like I said, I've got three cook systems. I would never bring three cook systems with me. And I want to play with them to see what works. Um, so yeah, man, that's it for the uh, for what I'm packing out for the camping trip. Um, Nobody get on my case. Yes, you did not see uh, an iPad in here. Um, I'm kind of working on one. I'll get it together. It's not in here. Um, it'll probably be carried separately. And the camp, the place that we're going camping, the base camp is a part is a, a place where I can park. So even on the day hikes, I'm never going to be more than like two or three miles from from uh, a mode of vehicle transportation. I'm not super worried about uh, major injuries. So. Um, I'll throw together a little IFAC, I just haven't gotten to that. But other than that, that's the kit. So, the very last thing I wanted to review are just my couple of points about the pack that I don't like. One, I mentioned this outer thing, I think that's just more personal preference. I think if they had designed this with a zipper that came up to the top 
and locked off somehow, I would be so much happier with that. Other than rather than just this big open gaping area with this tiny little netting, um, I would have been happier if it was convertible to close off. That's my number one thing. Uh, my number two thing, just I'm not saying they're not usable. The way I've packed this bag, these pouches are not that usable. Remember, like any other bag, because they're flat, they're not bellowed. Anything that's flat inside of a bag, anywhere you go, by default, takes up real estate of the rest of the bag. It doesn't add to the space and to the carryability. It just adds to the organization. So that's why I'm not using it. I filled up all the space there is to fill. This thing was packed out pretty tight. Um, it's just the usability. Um, and the last, um, well, two more things. Uh, my other two things that I found very quickly, and mind you, I haven't done more than just wear this around the house just to kind of test it out. But my, my last two gripes are um, the, the waist pads. Now, the shoulder pads are fantastic. They're very thick, they're very comfy, they've got the perfect curve on them. Um, a lot of people have questioned this yoke system here, the way instead of being attached straight to the bag, they're attached to themselves. It's personal preference, it's all I gotta tell you. It will work for some people, it will not work for others. It doesn't make it wrong, it just makes it the way it is. It fits me fine. I like it, it works okay. Um, one of the problems I have is that even though these are Molly, the regulation Molly, because, I don't know if you can see this, but they wrap the Molly and cinch it on the side, it means that this actually isn't the actual inside width of Molly webbing. So regular Molly stuff doesn't actually fit on here that well. You can't get the Molly strips through here because since it's the same length here as it is here, it's wrapped on the side so you don't have the effective space in the straps. Just a tiny, tiny little fault um, of 511s. But you can't complain. I mean, anybody who puts Molly on these straps in the first place is already thinking ahead. Um, so that was my complaint about that. Uh, the, my biggest complaint personally is the waist straps are just cheap and flimsy and very, very thin. I don't like them. Um, everybody knows that the proper way to wear a bag weight-wise is to put the weight on your hips, not on your shoulders. It doesn't matter how tight I get this thing, the weight still comes on the shoulders and it's kind of pissing me off. Um, this, this part, the padded part, is not long enough. It only comes out to like here on me. It doesn't come around over the hip bone where all the weight is supposed to sit right here. It doesn't do that. It only comes out to here and the rest of it is just webbing. Um, not a fan of that. I really, I'm really disappointed. And since it's just hard sewn into the sides, it's not like some bags that have the single belt that slides all the way through the back that you could actually pull out and replace, that would have been absolute gold, in my opinion, for this pack. Um, you can stuff this in here, fold it up, but it's sewn to the back. So that is a big gripe of mine, is these waist belts are just not, they don't cut it for me. Um, I guess the counter argument is, well, this isn't, you know, this is like maybe a three-day assault pack. Granted, a titanic version of a three-day assault pack, but I guess 511's thinking is that it shouldn't be weighing that much. You shouldn't be bearing that much weight on these. Well, I got 45 pounds in here, and that's a decent amount of weight. Um, and depending on what I put in here, you could easily, depending on what you're carrying, I'm sure even for military guys, if you're carrying even heavier stuff, ammo, you could pack this out 60, 70 pounds if you really found a way to do it. Mind you, I also have four liters of, of water carrying capability that are not full. So that's how much more weight, I'm not doing math right now, but another four liters of water between the bladder and the two liter bottles, I can really pack this thing out with weight and these just don't handle it. Um, and the last thing is this right here is the only retention system. This strap and this strap um, collectively on each side. So for the bottom, from the top. But all this does is hold this 
to the main bag. I have found that it doesn't do a very, it does, but not a great job of compressing the main bag. And so for that, when you're wearing it, the top tends to pull back on you. Um, it would be really cool to see them put a yoke, uh, a, a retention strap like this on the shoulder strap so that you can pull while it's on you. And you know, maybe it went from here to here. And that way you can pull everything towards you this way. It would be kind of nice, um, it's asking a lot. Um, but other than that, those are the things that people should know about this bag if you're looking for it. Um, uh, like I said, it does have the uh, it does have the, the back plate in here, but you can't mold it yourself. You can't change it. It does a good job filling the lumbar area. It's got the you know, it's got the kind of sweep that does that thing. But you can't change it. You can pull it out and get rid of it altogether, so there's no form or function in it. It doesn't it doesn't have the solid form, but you can't bend it. It's not. It does, they don't want you to bend it on your own. So, uh, and I gotta say the. Um, because the whole back is open for the water bladder, um, I could act, I have a two liter in here. I could probably actually almost get two two liter bladders side by side in here if I really wanted to. That's nice. Again, you're tacking on weight, but it's doable. So, um, yeah, that's that's uh, that's pretty much it. Um, so I hope you found it useful um, as far as practical applications of the bag. And um, if you're shopping for one of these, yes. I mean, all I did was basically tell you all the, the few things I didn't like about it. But uh, it it's really a great bag. Um, and I'll probably be able to say more fantastic things about it after I do my, my trip um, camping. We'll see how it goes. Uh, I like it. I really like it a lot. And if you're looking for something in the largest three-day assault pack category, I really think this is the way to go. Unless you want to dish out the money for like an Everly Stock Warhammer, which was basically the comparable that I was looking at volume-wise. Um, there's a lot of packs that look about this size, but they do not carry anything close to 47 liters. Um, and I just I couldn't believe the numbers when I saw it. I had to get it for myself to see. But it really does. You've seen it. You can pack out a, a lot of stuff in here. Probably more so than you need, and you probably will overpack like I do. But uh, yeah, it's a great pack. So I'm done right now. Uh, I hope you guys all enjoyed watching this. Um, leave comments about the loadout. Um, what you think of what I've got? Um, what I'm missing out on? And uh, subscribe, like the whole nine yards, and uh, hopefully I'll be able to produce some uh, some better videos off of that will stem from this as I get to use this equipment. So, again, this has been Urban Gotham Prepper. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll catch you on the next one.